Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome back to Rob Motive. If you're new here and you haven't subscribed, please consider smashing that subscribe button right now. Today, I'm going to be installing the Toyota Tacoma roof rack for the third gen Tacoma. I've had this for a while, actually had to wait for some brackets. They finally came, so we're gonna put it on. All you've got right here are the two roof racks themselves, pretty easy. Uh, a little bit of hardware, not too bad. And then of course, these pesky brackets, I have them. So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna get this installed. The first step is to go ahead and remove this little rubber piece that runs all the way down the side. Obviously you have one on the driver's side, one on the passenger side. Should be able to just pull this off. I'm hoping you don't need any tools, let's find out. I'm gonna try to just grab it right here on the front lip on the edge. There's some mats out here. Uh, see if I can't get a pull on it. I think I can so far. Yeah, that was pretty easy. It actually has a little uh, snap that goes over a little piece in the channel. So should be able to just pull this up. So far, so good. No problems. Turn you guys a little. Make our way on back to the rear. I haven't even seen any adhesive in here yet. Wow, there's supposed to be. Yeah, there is. Fortunately, it just kind of came right off. Um, there's the adhesive. It did take a little bit of the paint off right there, but that's the paint that was over the tape that's over the holes, not the truck itself. So that gets the main part off. Now we need to remove the back section right here. Should be able to do the same thing, just kinda grab onto that and pull. You do wanna be careful around the back here, before I pull it off, I'll show you. Right around the back here, it goes underneath this weather stripping, or this rubber part. You don't wanna pull that too hard to mess that up, so just be weary of that while you're pulling this off. There we go. Same clip, there's a little clip that's integrated into the channel in the truck right there. This, I believe, is held on by double-sided tape. It is. Again, just being careful on the tape. Yeah, the tape here wants to stick to the truck, so that's good. I mean, that is the idea, right? It's pretty, uh, pretty pliable, and that's because it's like 300 degrees here. There, pulled it right off. Again, this little lip here, edge, it's just an edge, was tucked underneath. You might be able to see the dirt mark. That's how far it was underneath that little rubber gasket. And as far as the adhesive, we have a little bit left right here. Hopefully, just be able to pull that off by hand. So I'm gonna get that off and then we'll move on to the next step. I've got all the holes cut out. You can see right there. Um, I did go ahead and make the slits, just move them to the sides, that's about it. There are washers that come with this. I'll show you those. They fit over the hole, they're rubber washers, and I'm sure the idea is to prevent water from getting in there, because I have heard of people having leaks. These are the washers, they fit over the holes in between the bracket and the truck. I am going to put some silicone over that around the edges and across the top before I bolt it down for each bolt, I guess, that I'm going to put through. So we're going to do that next. Okay, got everything I need up here on the truck with me. Um, I did discover, and I should have realized, the washers are adhesive backed. Makes it a little easier to stick them down, right? Also, some pink screws. They're the ones that are going to hold the brackets down. And then we have a shorter blue screw that goes into um, the bracket from the roof rack in the front. And then we have some longer three blue screws that are going to go into the other holes in the truck on down the bracket or the, the roof rack, I should say. Okay, first things first, going to go ahead and put the washers on. Normally, I would clean this area up with alcohol, but there's no real reason to because they're going to be tightened down with a bolt, so they're not going to go anywhere. Um, we're going to go ahead and get the first two on. Again, they are adhesive backed. That is a good thing. This hole opened up. It wants to close the tape around it. Get that up a little bit better there. Just so I can get it placed, hopefully, right over the hole. That's the idea. 
There we go. I think that one was good. I'll show you these in just a second. Okay, that puts the washers on. You guys can see them, hopefully, right here. Now, I am gonna take some silicone and just go around the edges of those washers and then maybe across the top. Again, now's the time to try to prevent any kind of water leakage. So I'm gonna do a little bit of overkill here, I realize, but I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. I've got the silicone around, you can see. It may not be pretty, but it should be effective. Got the screws in. This does take a uh, T30 Torx bit. So I'm just gonna tighten those down. The holes did line up. I have heard reports from people in the past uh, that they had issue with the holes lining up. Um, that would of course be a nightmare uh, if you got all this and the holes did not line up. They seem to be a pretty good fit to me so far. Now, you don't wanna kill this when you put it on. Fortunately, we are screwing metal into metal, but still, you don't want to kill it. So I am going to snug it up and then we'll, should be ready to go ahead and actually mount the rest of the washers, which you saw how I did that. I'm going to do the exact same thing. Um, I did put a little bit of silicone across the top of the washer as well. Again, overkill, but hey, now's the time to do it. And silicone is pretty cheap. It's time to go ahead and place the roof rack now. You have a little hole here in the front that a little nub on the roof rack goes through and then a little center part that goes through here and that's where we'll actually bolt it all down. Get everything in the right holes. Hopefully should be able to just give this thing a good tap uh, to go ahead and place it. I am going to release the bar. Um, let's go ahead and get this around so I can see the other holes and just set it off to the side. But now let's go ahead and give this a quick smack. Hopefully it goes in, we hope. Here we go. Should be it. Now, there's two bolts that need to go in here. Okay, got the first one in. These take a Torx 25, by the way. So, a little bit different than the others going to get them seated in there kind of loosely. Now I'm going to go along the top and put the other ones in. Uh, should be pretty simple, I hope. And those are the longer. Um, I think these are a Torx 30. Let's see. They are. So we'll go ahead, put the other ones in down the line, and then we're basically done on this side. Okay, ran into a bit of an issue. Full disclosure, these two front bolts bolting down into the bracket, or two screws, I should say, right here and right here. The bracket holes were too far this way. So I had to kind of trim out the edge of both of these holes to be able to get these screws down into the threaded holes to be able to tighten them down. Um, that was kind of a pain. So they're just off, I don't know, maybe, eighth of an inch, something like that. Um, so I did use my X-Acto knife there. It's very easy. I just kind of gently trimmed off the edge. You can't even tell from looking at it, I don't think, um, because it wasn't off very far. But I did go ahead and do that, and then all the rest of the bolts, or screws, I should say, fit in there perfectly. So not a big deal there. Uh, just a little annoying. Now, up here at the front, or the rear, I should say, um, we do have to stick this down. There is some double-sided tape. This edge, just like the other one right here, uh, will tuck underneath this rubber gasket, if you will. So I am going to get some rubbing alcohol and just clean off that area because we are going to be sticking that down, even though it's going to be held down underneath the, the little gasket right here. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And then I'm going to put the other side on. Hopefully it'll go a little bit smoother. I won't have to do any of that little, just minute trimming. And then I'll come back on and I'll show you how, how it looks. And also the big question, will that rear bar swing out and clear the satellite shark fin antenna? I'm thinking not. Okay, got everything on and one last piece to go. And I don't know if they all come this way, but with mine, the passenger side swing bar, I'll call it, that goes across there, uh, actually came unattached. So what you do, just stick the one end that fastens down in the side that fastens down. And then over here, you have a bolt hole. 
and a nice long bolt. Uh, stick it in there over the top like that. And then I'd go ahead and push the side that goes down, down like that. You can hear it snap there. And then I'd go ahead and align the bolt uh, and get that thing in how it's supposed to go right there. Uh, it's pretty simple, not complicated. And it does take a uh, Torx, let's see, what is this, 25. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that bolted down, then I'll be done. We'll open them up, I'll show you how it works. Uh, and I did have a question from Tim as to whether or not the bar goes across the sunroof. Sure looks like it's gonna. And then we'll see about this satellite shark fin back here. The parts container is empty. I must be done. Thank goodness. Probably took me about two hours to do this. Uh, most of it's filming. It's probably about a 45 minute job if uh, you don't have to mess with those bolt holes. So how does it look? There's a view from the side. Here's a view from the front. Of course, I've got one of them undone sitting there. So just look at the rack itself uh, because I'm gonna show you how it works. And it's pretty simple. You can reach it from the ground, at least I can. Um, the clasp is actually over there, the, the little lever that holds it down, but would be rather difficult to get it to the other side unless you throw it. Now, how it works, just has a little pull-up thing right here. It's pretty simple. Pull it up, say that, there you go. It's new, it's tight. Uh, and then just kind of swing it over to the other side. Of course, we have the other one over there, so I'm gonna go grab that. So we're over here on the other side. We're gonna go ahead, pull this one over the top, and then it should, if it lines up correctly, let me sit you guys down here. Pull this one out of the way. It should line up in the hole that's over here with that same little lever or clasp thing. Let's make sure it does. So one of the questions Tim asked me, does it go across the sunroof? Well, you can see there, obviously it does. Let's take a quick look inside. Uh, it's just the front part of the sunroof. I'm not sure how much we actually are going to see of it. Let's find out. There you go. So it goes across the sunroof this much. Uh, you could still have the sunroof open. I don't think it would open high enough to hit the um, bar. It might. Let's take a look here on the outside. Uh, it might. I don't recall how high up the sunroof actually goes. Um, but I don't think so. I don't think so. In other words, when it pops up, you know, for venting and then slides back, I guess. So I don't know, we'd have to see. Let's go ahead, move this one towards the other side. And you notice it does have rubber bumpers on it. So that's good. It's not gonna scratch up your roof, but we have a problem. <laughs> I mentioned this earlier, and that is the shark fin antenna. Uh, I heard, someone told me that Toyota, for some reason, actually moved this thing forward. Um, and I believe it's gonna be in the way. Let's see, actually, you know what? Let's just see here. Well, oh, that's a tight fit right there. Let's see if I can get this down. It may be hitting. It is not hitting. Okay, I did get it down. It does fit down. And it does look like it may be contacting the antenna, but yeah, it does, barely. It does contact the satellite radio um, shark fin there. Not horribly. Let's see if I can get this open. Yeah, actually it's adjustable. Maybe they did that for a reason. Um, there's two points you can put it down, one here and one here. See that? There's two holes. If you put it all the way in the back one, um, it's definitely going to impact the satellite antenna. I bet you that's why they did it. If you put it up here in the front, yeah, you could see it move there, I think. Yeah, it does impact it, but it doesn't render it useless. It does push down a little. Let's see here. Yeah, so you could use it. Um, I don't know if it's a big deal. There is a rubber gasket around here. Um, it just pushes it down just slightly. Um, to me, 
that's not a real big deal. I mean, I'm glad that, uh, that it just works. It will work with the shark fin, and I think that is why um, they have that extra hole there in case you have that antenna, I'm not sure. Anyway, that is the full Monty. It is done. Um, I like it. I like the looks of it. It is, as it turns out, functional too. I was concerned about that satellite shark fin, but you could use it. Does contact it, will push it down just a little, but I really don't think it's a problem that big a deal. Anyway, um, as far as the quality of it, I did have a couple of issues with bolt holes again. I did have to trim one of them on the passenger side to get the bolt to line up correctly. Um, shouldn't have to do that. If that was just a little bit bigger, that uh, wouldn't be an issue at all, but it is what it is. Not difficult, you just have to be, uh, you have to have a little bit of ingenuity sometimes uh, when you're doing mods like this. Sometimes they just have to be tweaked a little bit, and this one definitely did. Anyway, leave a comment, let me know what you think. This is the Toyota Tacoma roof rack installation. For the third gen Tacoma, and uh, I'll give it a thumbs up, level of difficulty, probably about a, a three out of five, only because you have to have a little bit of ingenuity and a little bit of patience. Leave a comment, let me know what you think of it. Also, real quick, I do have two additional channels, Rob Motive JT, all about my 2020 Jeep Gladiator sitting out there basking in the sun. And Rob Motive Tundra about my quest for the upcoming next generation Toyota Tundra. Check them out, and if you're interested, please consider subscribing. Don't forget to click that notification bell so that you don't miss out on any upcoming videos. And do me a favor, smash that subscribe button on the way out. Thanks for watching. Stay safe out there. Bye.